So this should be a pretty quick video. All I want to do is demonstrate how I am able to get audio out of VCV Rack and into Ableton and also send MIDI from Ableton and into VCV Rack. The way that Windows handles system audio makes this difficult and I honestly think it's impossible to do it. If anybody out there has figured out a way to do this, let me know. I have not. But on a Mac, what you can do is use a tool called Black Hole. Black Hole basically sets up a virtual audio bus that you can use to route audio between software. So I have in my patch, you can see here, I've got Black Hole chosen as the device. And then when I send audio to uh, channels one and two of Black Hole, they come in through um, channels one and two of Black Hole here in my audio inputs list. So you can get this tool from existential.audio. It's free. Um, you just have to install it. They have a two channel version, a 16 channel version, and I believe a 64 channel version if you need that many channels. The two channel version should be enough for most people, but I have the 16 channel installed just in case I want to do multi-track audio from VCV Rack, which I have done, and it works great. So um, once you get that installed, you can either, if you're only using VCV Rack, you can just choose Black Hole as your audio input in Ableton. You got it, you get an option right there. However, I have an audio interface and I want to use it with my other hardware inputs as well, active at the same time. So the way that I do that is within the um, audio MIDI setup. Th this is a utility that's just on every Mac. You can just find it by typing in audio MIDI setup into the search bar and you'll bring it up. You have the option to create an aggregate device. Now an aggregate device combines multiple audio devices into a single device that can be selected as an input or an output within uh, a DAW. So as you can see here, I've got Studio All, which is my aggregate device set as the input and output for my audio. So within the audio MIDI setup, what you have to do is click on this little plus sign right here, create aggregate device. It'll bring you to this page where you can select all of the devices in your um, aggregate and then you can give it a name and then that's going to be your audio device. So I don't need that, I've already got one. And in mine, as you can see, um, what I did is I chose my Ultralight Mark V by Motu, my OP1, and Black Hole. Um, so if I'm correct, uh, the way that this works is you want your main device to be kind of like the master clock and then the additional devices uh, turn on drift correction so that those clocks will sync to the master clock. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure, but I've had it set up this way and it seems to be working okay. So that's what I've done. And then, um, then you can just select the input within Ableton or whatever your DAW is. And then under the input config page, you can uh, enable or disable whichever devices you would like to use. So I just have one channel of the black hole enabled at the moment, but sometimes I enable more. I've got my OP1, and then I've got the hardware inputs on my Motu. For the MIDI, um, we can go back over into the audio MIDI setup, and uh, we have to go to Window and then Show MIDI Studio. So this page right here is kind of just like a, it shows you like all of the MIDI devices that you have currently, um, or that you have used in the past as well. Uh, so this one right here, IAC driver, normally that's going to be disabled. If you double click on it and then enable this devices online checkbox, you will then be able to choose this uh, IAC driver as an audio device or a, sorry, as a MIDI device in Ableton. And what this is, is kind of like black hole. It's uh, a bus that lets you send MIDI data between programs. So within Ableton, if we go to our MIDI setup page and then go to the uh, MIDI ports section down here, I have it set so the IAC driver, IAC driver, however you want to say it, is enabled for uh, tracking, sync, and remote control. So I can send MIDI notes, I can send clock data, and I can send CC values. So when I hit play, when I hit play in Ableton, this MIDI to CV, which has the IAC driver bus one selected as the source, will send clock data and uh, stop. Is it a stop? 
Oh, I guess it starts automatically when when the clock goes, and then it sends a stop when it sends a reset signal when the clock stops. So as soon as I start this, this starts sending clock data to our clock module, and then the patch starts to run. So you can um, also, I should demonstrate that you can use a MIDI track, and if you select the IAC driver as the output, and then let's say we just put some notes here. So if I do some of that, and then we can just loop that. So if we loop that, and then I go back here, and then if I send, if I just send this to like an envelope, one of these, cause you can see it. Um, if you get the uh, gate data, which is gonna send note, uh, basically note on off values, you can see that every time, MIDI, every time Ableton sends a MIDI note through the IAC driver, uh, VCV reacts. So you can set this up to send MIDI to VCV rack and then set up either an additional audio track to take the audio from black hole, or you can just set up, or you can just set up an external instrument device on this MIDI channel and set that up using the black hole as the audio source. Either way, uh, they both work. Additionally, um, one quick troubleshooting note, if you're not getting audio from black hole into Ableton or your DAW, one thing that I've noticed that somehow I've accidentally done is within the actual sound settings on my Mac, I have like turned down the uh, black hole device. Um, and if you do this, if, if, if like when you have this selected here and you have the audio turned down like this, so you have to go to your settings on your Mac and uh, go to the audio output settings and make sure that the output volume for black hole is turned up. So you can just click on black hole and then use the volume buttons on your Mac to turn it up. And that should solve that problem. I've run into that a few times. The first time I ran into it, I was like nearly pulling my hair out trying to figure it out. But yeah, that's all there is to this video. Like I said, pretty quick, not a lot of explanation needed, but it does work and it's really great and it's free. So yeah, that's all I got for today. Thanks.